Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel on Feynman integration. Uh, today we'll be evaluating this integral. Um, and uh, really uh, a quick note, um, I got a couple comments on this channel about referring to this as Feynman integration, even though it uses a technique developed by, uh, is it Wilhelm Gottfried Leibniz or Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, I forget. But anyway, it's called the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign. That's the uh, that's the rule that's used um, in almost all of my videos. And, you know, he was correct. Um, it, it is a technique that was developed by Leibniz, the co-founder of calculus, along with uh, Sir Isaac Newton. Um, but uh, Richard Feynman kind of uh, repopularized it uh, for use in solving tricky integrals like this one. So that is now why it's commonly referred to as Feynman integration. There are lots of instances of that sort of thing happening throughout the history of mathematics, like the, uh, the Pythagorean theorem um, is attributed to Pythagoras, but it's a well-known fact that it was developed independently um, a couple of times before his time um, in different places around the world, but uh, we just don't know who they were. So, you know, that, that sort of thing happens a lot in mathematics. Things get renamed. Um, so I'm not, I'm not insulting Leibniz by referring to it as uh, Feynman integration. It's just that he, um, he kind of uh, resurrected it for use in tricky integrals. Um, so anyway, um, the first thing we need to recognize is Euler's formula. Um, that says that e to the i x is equal to cosine of x plus i sine x. You don't need any introduction to that. Um, I may not have shown the, the following thing on this channel before. Well, if this is true, then e to the i negative x, or e to the negative i x, is equal to cosine of negative x, which is simply cosine x, plus i sine of negative x, which is simply minus i sine x. Now, adding these two equations together, uh, no, I'm sorry, subtracting them will give us e to the i x minus e to the negative i x is equal to um, 2 i sine x. Then dividing both sides by 2 i gives us the exponential representation for the sine function. So um, we will be using this and plugging it in right there. And of course, noticing that you can just replace x with x squared in each of those instances and arrive here. So we'll, we'll rewrite our integral like this. This is going to be 1 over 2i times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the ix squared minus e to the negative ix squared over x squared dx. And I'm going to go ahead and erase this since we don't need it. Okay. Um, what next? Create a function of t that is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of uh, e to the negative tx squared minus e to the negative ix squared over x squared dx. And then uh, we'll make a couple notes up here that if we evaluate our f at the point t is equal to, uh, let's see, uh, i, we'll get 0 because that we, we would just have um, e to the negative ix squared minus e to the negative ix squared, which is 0. So that's true. Next thing, if we evaluate our function at the point negative i, and then divide it by 2i, we will recover our original integral right here. And I'll leave it to you to verify that. Um, yeah. Okay, so next step. Uh, we're going to take f prime of t uh, using the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign. So f prime of t, that's going to give us the integral from 0 to infinity, let's see, we'll recover a negative. Uh, the x squared will cancel out, as will this last term. Um, and we'll be left with nothing but e to the negative uh, t 
x squared dx. And I don't think you guys need to see me evaluate this integral. It's just going to be equal to negative square root of pi over 2 times t to the negative 1 half. All right. So um, anti-differentiating both sides with respect to t will give us f of t, which is what we're after, is equal to, let's see, we still have a negative square root of pi over 2, and then we'll have times t to the 1 half over 1 half, or just times 2. So we just have negative square root of pi. All right. Good? No. Plus c. Okay. So how do we get rid of that c? We're going to do it the usual way. We know that if we evaluate our function at the point t equals i, we get 0. So let's do that. That's going to mean that 0 is equal to negative square root of pi times i to the 1 half plus c. i to the 1 half is, well, you can, uh, i can be written e to the i pi over 2. So uh, raise that to the 1 half power and you have e to the i pi over 4. So this is e to the i pi over 4. All right, that means c is equal to negative no, I'm sorry, c is equal to positive square root of pi e to the i pi over 4. Plus, yeah, e to the i pi over 4. All right. So let's evaluate our function at the point negative i. Now that we have a strict, or a, a, um, a definition for our f of t purely in terms of t, with no integral signs or anything like that, Let's evaluate it at the point negative i, divide it by 2i, and that'll be our answer. All right, so what is f evaluated at negative i? Well, first of all, I'm going to rewrite this as our f of t is equal to e to the i pi over 4 minus... Oh, you know what? I forgot something. This is... There's actually a... Uh, a... Uh, square root of pi in front of that e to the i pi over 4. My apologies for that. Okay. Um, yeah, there's definitely a square root of pi uh, in front of that e to the i pi over 4. But anyway, I'm rewriting that as e to the i pi over 4 minus square root of pi uh, t to the one-half, yeah. Okay, now we'll evaluate this at the point negative i, and then divide it by 2i. So f um, evaluated at negative i is equal to the square root of pi times e to the i pi over 4 minus, let's see, negative i to the one-half. Well, negative i can be written e to the negative i pi over 2. Taking that to the one-half power will be e to the negative i pi over 4. And then dividing both sides by 2i will give us our i. Okay, well... Remember um, earlier on in the video when I showed that uh, e to the i x minus e to the negative i x over 2 i was equal to sine x? Um, well, this is that form. So this is actually this part right here. This e to the i pi over 4 minus e to the negative i pi over 4 over 2 i. That's simply going to be sine of pi over 4. Um, so we can just get rid of that, and that is square root of pi times sine of pi over 4. Well, sine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2. So that's going to be equal to the square root of 2 pi over 2. Um, 
And we could write that as the square root of 2 pi over 4, uh, which is simply the square root of pi over 2. And uh, that's it. That's the answer. So there you go. I uh, hope you enjoyed that.